Hey guys, uh, this is DFS Chan. Hi, coming to you live uh, to talk about uh, April 10th, uh, two game LOL DFS slate. Oh man, yesterday's was a little rough, um, even though I made some money back. Um, like I said, I think C9 was going to win no matter what. Um, you know, but between G2 and Fnatic, I predicted Fnatic to win, but unfortunately they lost game one. They had a pretty competitive game in game one until like the 20th minute. Um, and then after that, I mean, they just had really bad picks and bans. Um, I think they try to do a little too much by picking some champions that are not in the meta, but also they're not accustomed to. So it was really, um, you know, unlike uh, that we've seen out of Fnatic um, throughout the entire regular split, uh, spring split. Um, so I was very disappointed, but, you know, like I said, I think it was more of a 50-50 as to, you know, G2's chances coming into that matchup because G2 was on, you know, such a hot streak, uh, beating their opponents respectively 3-0, 3-0 in the games before that. But now with this game over Fnatic, with this win over Fnatic, 3-0. I mean, they've won the not last nine games, nine out of nine games. So really they're on fire right now. Um, they're probably probably the hottest team other than D1 in the world right now. Um, as you see, if G2 wins uh, against Rogue today, um, they are going to be representing Europe in the M MSI tournament, as mentioned, the mid-season invitational where the, all the winners of each region uh, come, come and meet and compete. So it's going to be a very interesting matchup, but, you know, first they're going to have to beat Rogue. And this is the LEC finals, the grand finale of the um, uh, spring split uh, for Europe. Rogue is a favorite at minus 139, and G2 is an underdog at plus one, 100. Really, at this point, though, I mean, this is like a championship game, right? So really, the odds don't really matter that much. Um, it's really based on, um, I think, the matchup analysis and based on who you think will play better um, around critical, you know, junction, junction, uh, junctures of, of the game. Really, Fnatic kind of blew almost every objective that they should have secured. I know Yankos for G2 has had a really good time yesterday uh, stealing objectives away from Resort and Fnatic. So I don't know if that's going to be a repeat performance because of the way that Maorang for Rogue has been performing as well. Um, both junglers have been playing out of their minds as playoffs, um, but let's dive into that matchup first before we get into the LCS matchup later in the day. So yeah, Rogue and G2 are kicking off in about two, two hours or so. Um, Rogue has had a really tough time. Um, no, uh, Rogue has had a very easy time beating their opponents throughout the entire regular split, uh, regular spring, spring split. And then in the playoffs, they have beat, uh, let's see who they beat, Fnatic and Misfits. Um, I think Fnatic series was, like I said, was a very interesting one. I think Fnatic could have won that either way. Um, and then I think Rogue and Misfits was an interesting one because Misfits tilted just like Fnatic did yesterday after the first loss. Given all of that, like I said, G2 is coming off of a very hot streak, 3-0-3-0-3-0, um, but and Caps has been playing well. And most importantly, Broken Blade in the top lane has been playing well. And frankly, I think that was the main, one of the main differences between uh, Fnatic and G2, that Broken Blade really had domination, dominance in the top lane over Wonder for Fnatic um, all series along. So now Rogue has um, is it Finn? Let me see who they play last time. Odo Omne, sorry. Finn is in the LCS now. Odo Omne um, going up against Broken Blade. Um, I think that's going to be an interesting matchup. I think Odo Omne is actually not that bad. Um, Odo Omne is a little better than, has been playing better than Wonder. Um, so I think it's going to be a tougher matchup for Broken Blade. But Broken Blade has been in such good form, um, and he's been, you know, bringing out champions, not only like assassin champions or uh, melee champions, but I mean, he's, he was bringing out Orn yesterday, and he was finishing like 
to four zero and two or something like that. I mean, he's been just playing everything um, that the team needs. So Brooklyn Blade has been really good. Yankos, I think it's going to be a tough matchup against Malrang. And then Caps versus Larson will probably be the marquee matchup of the day, in my opinion, because Larson has been the engine for that rogue team. And then Caps, really depending on how Caps plays, I think G2 goes because Broken Blade and Yankos are kind of uh, more, much more reliable than Caps has been this split. So I think that's going to be the key matchup between Caps and Larson. And then in the bottom lane, I'm still not that impressed with Flax and Targamas. Um, but and then going up against Comp and Trimby, I think it's just going to be a wash. I'm not too impressed with any either of those duos. Um, I think they're good, but they're not great. So, do I think Larson is going to beat Caps? Probably. But then, do I think um, Broken Blade will beat Odo Omne? Yeah, probably. Um, I think it's, it's going to come down to the mid and jungle, probably. Um, I think it's a toss up. I mean, it's a championship game, like I said, um, but just given the matchup here, I think Rogue has a little bit of advantage in my opinion. Um, I know G2 is coming in hot and I think a lot of people will have G2 and they should. Um, I think G2 can definitely win this series, but if I have to predict, <laughs> I think I'm just gonna still have to go with Rogue. In my opinion, Rogue's like only weakness was Maorang's lack of proactiveness um, around the map. Um, I know he's more of a scaler, like he, I know he is, you know, he likes to be more of a utility role in jungle. He likes to put wards down, help it help their team, uh, laners respectively to, you know, make sure they know where the other team's jungler is at and what the, the current status is on the map, where everybody is. Um, so, but I mean, coming in, I mean, last series against Fnatic and then against Misfits, I really like the way that Maorang played. Um, really, I think that's a huge upgrade um, if he is playing like that um, for Rogue. So I'm, I think I'm going to have to favor Rogue here. Um, but like I said, I, mean, I think G2 is a great play for GPP purposes, um, but I'm still going to have to go with Rogue. I think Rogue is going to win 3-2-1, 3-1 over G2. But G2 is going to be a good play too. And I think the LEC game, again, is going to be the more bloody matchup. Um, it was yesterday, slightly, depending on, who, you know, over, I mean, on the overall score. I know both games, LEC and LCS games, ended 3 nothing. But um, I think um, just the way that they saw, um, saw sought out um, kills and assists, the way that the games were played uh, for G2, I think it's going to um, increase Rogue's kill upside as well. Here, um, oh, there's interesting in the LJL that it's tied two to do, but man, minus 10,000. And they're tied two to two game of going to game five. Silver scrapes. All right. LCS between FlyQuest and Evil Geniuses. So I've thought a lot about this one because I've mentioned on other videos previously um, Evil Geniuses has the upside to win it all, like win the entire LCS playoffs, but they've been so inconsistent. I mean, here, as you can see against a really good team and Team Liquid, um, they lost three to two, but I mean, they can show, they've shown me that they can win it all. They have the talent, they have the kill, uh, they have the upside, they have the team to do it, <laughs> but they also have the team where they can blow up and you know just not play well <laughs> to put it simply so really i mean i think FlyQuest is it's you know they've been more of a they have been a more consistent more consistent team i know that um tukui in the mid lane has been lights out uh for them but i don't know like going up against is it jojo pion um in the mid lane I think evil geniuses has a pretty good shot against uh fly quest today i mean i think it really comes down to, I think, so let's dive into each matchup, each laner. So Impact over Kumo. I think Impact is, I mean, really good. Has been so solid this split. And I think Inspire versus Jose Diedo. I mean, I think both are really good. Um, I think both are good players. Um, I might have to give a slight edge to Jose because he showed me that he can carry his team on his back and then have that kind of performance. 
And then Jojo Pion and Tukoi, I think those are those guys are pretty good. I mean, I know Jojo Pion has struggled a bit early in the season, but I still think um, Tukoi is a little bit better. But I think that's more of a wash now. And then it says here about Danny and Volkan, Volkan, Volkan versus Johnson and Aframo, Aframu. Um, I think they, I'm going to have to give an edge to the EG bottom duo uh, with Danny and Vulcan over Johnson and Aframu. I think Vulcan is very aggressive, and I think in a best of five series, and given how not aggressive FlyQuest is, I really like EG style over FlyQuest. Um, along with Inspired and then Impact, they both like to go in a lot, um, aggressive styles. Um, I know that's, I mean, really the whole EG and the Jojo Pion is more of like a playing the more of a utility guy role, in my opinion, uh, for EG. But, um, you know, I hope he plays some Assassin Champions throughout the series today. But I'm going to have to give an edge to Evil Geniuses. I mean, I think even though Jose Dero and Tukui have been playing well, um, I think overall uh, Jojo Pion and Inspired, and then especially in the bottom lane, Vulcan and Danny, I think they're going to give uh um they're gonna give eg a better chance to win in a best of five series like that so i'm gonna have to go eg i think i'm gonna pick eg to win fly people fly quest three to two i think eg has been inconsistent enough so that they'll probably drop a game or two but at the end of the day i think their talent is superior to fly quest and i think evil geniuses will come through so i have for lec in europe i have um Rogue, but I think it's more of a 50 50. And then in the LCS, I have Evil Geniuses winning. I think FlyQuest definitely could pull this off, but I give, I'm giving G2 more chance to upset as an underdog uh, compared to FlyQuest over EG. So, anyway, and then in terms of kill upside, like I said, LEC is superior to LCS, I think. Um, LCS, uh, but on a two game slate like this, you probably need to go off the script a little bit to be able to take down a GPP contest. And Evil Geniuses has shown me that, I mean, they, they have a, you know, they have a path that they can be in the optimal lineup, you know, by, you know, as a long stack. I mean, EG sometimes, you know, chases kills and goes for kills throughout the, throughout the games. Um, but I'm just a little worried about FlyQuest uh, tendencies to, uh, out, you know, try to outscale the other team by playing slow and all that. So I think it's going to be limiting Evil Geniuses kill upside today. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, again, we're not going to have League of Legends for a little while until the LPL playoffs is back. I know in China, they're going through a lot uh, with the pandemic again. Um, hopefully it doesn't come here in the United States again. Um, I'm dreading that, but in China, that's what's happening. So they postponed uh, the LPL, uh, you know, for another couple of days, I think. So starting this upcoming week, um, they're going to pick it back up again, and hopefully we'll have some, uh, you know, uh, another other LPL slates. So if you guys have any other questions, let me know. If you like the video, hit the like button and then hit the subscribe button to watch other videos about other sports. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Good luck.